Hello all, this is Evan Krell presenting Explaining Complex 3D Atmospheric CNNs Using Shap-Based Channel-Wise XAI Techniques with Interactive 3D Visualization. After introducing some of the challenges applying XAI to explain CNNs with complex raster inputs, we'll look at a couple tools developed for generating and visualizing channel-wise superpixel explanations. We'll consider three CNN examples and discuss some of our ongoing work. Typical examples of raster XAI are applied to RGB images, where entire pixels are assigned importance, but for atmospheric CNNs, probably interested in the influence within specific channels. For example, to determine how important the wind is compared to temperature, atmospheric pressure, etc. Looking at these three examples, there are a variety of possible relationships between raster channels. Thus, there may be meaning to the adjacency between bands, which could have autocorrelation that makes it harder to get meaningful explanations from XAI techniques. Individual pixels may have very little information. XAI techniques that explain the feature by manipulating individual raster elements to see their influence on the prediction might not always produce accurate outputs. That is, removing a single pixel might not change the overall image enough to cause an appreciable change in prediction. CNNs learn complex relationships between the elements. Correlations and feature interactions are known to challenge the assumptions of most XAI techniques, and this can be a large problem when dealing with large atmospheric data volumes with correlation in both space and between channels. So, grouping channel elements is a recommended remedy, but there are so many choices on how to do so. Here, we'll demonstrate that the way elements are grouped can strongly impact the explanation. This image shows many of the potential partition schemes. Four is ideal if you know the best way to divide the input into semantically meaningful features that are more or less uncorrelated with others. But this is challenging to determine. The partition shap method does five, spatial superpixels. Grouped pixels may cause a large enough change in the input to affect the prediction, but we learn nothing about the individual channels. Here we present our extension called channel-wise partition shap that does scheme seven. We'll also compare to a group-based partition scheme where domain knowledge was used to divide groups of channels as shown in 6. These methods are based on SHAP, which is an XAI technique based on cooperative game theory to assign two features their contribution to the model prediction while meeting certain fairness guarantees. The contribution is calculated not simply by comparing output with and without masking the feature, but doing so repeatedly while masking other groups of features. Because it rests on more principled theory than many similar techniques, SHAP has become very popular. But it can still, like the others, struggle with the correlations and interactions that we expect to see in more complex CNNs. So, grouping of the raster elements will be critical for effective explanations. Partition SHAP applies SHAP to images, where a hierarchy of less granular to more granular superpixels is used to determine superpixel contribution. Our extension, channel-wise partition SHAP, is implemented by first splitting along the channels and evaluating superpixels within them. This slide is for your later reference to access our modified version of the SHAP library and to see several Jupyter notebooks with demonstrations. While you can plot the explanations of each channel in separate 2D plots, it might not easily reveal 3D patterns across channels, especially when dealing with hundreds of channels, such as our fog prediction model that has 384 bands. So we built an interactive 3D tool to examine heat maps as 3D volumes. Here is a brief demo for an explanation of a CNN using multispectral satellite images. Before we look at atmospheric CNNs, this example is a sanity check on channel-wise attribution. We took the Eurosat imagery and developed two models that classify as either forest or river, 
One model uses only RGB bands, and the other also includes near-infrared. From the image, it is clear that near-infrared makes the decision obvious. Sure enough, the convergence curves of both models show that with near-infrared, orange curve, the model has near-perfect performance almost immediately. So we assume that the model takes advantage of that band, and we find that channel-wise partition shap consistently attributes prediction to it. Our main interest is the 384 band fog prediction model, but we'll first look at a tornado prediction CNN to compare our output to the input times gradient method output produced by Ryan Lagerquist. This method is a gradient based technique where strong gradients of the prediction class with respect to the input image suggest important input elements. We don't expect the two methods to give identical results. Both are probing the model from very different approaches. Ideally, multiple methods can give complementary insights. Here, uh, just a quick qualitative assessment shows more or less overall agreement between the two techniques. But there is a discrepancy between them for the best correct nulls. Both methods have instances where image edge pixels are highlighted, but in this case the edge dominates over the storm center for partition chap, which makes no physical sense. It is consistent enough that I suspect that the model is exploiting spurious associations present in these cropped storm images. It may be that the relationship is more complex, and thus more readily detected by SHAP. We'll revisit the idea of discrepancies between methods at the end and how to better evaluate which is correct. Here, the FogNet data structure is of interest. Five groups of meteorological variables, so we expect substantial autocorrelation within some groups. This model does beat HREF, but performs better for some fog types than others. Advection fog is well represented in the training data, and performance is high. Will we find that the failure to perform as well for radiation fog is because it is inappropriately using advection fog strategies instead of learning associations of its own? Uh, first, consider these spatial-wise aggregate explanations. We see advection fog predictions are reliant on the coast, and this meets expectations. Based on this, we could even try an alternative model where the input data is zoomed on the coast. However, we see similar explanations for radiation and advection radiation, even though we expected to see influence of offshore wind. It appears that the model struggles to develop different strategies for the different fog types. So instead of a single fog prediction, we plan to implement a multi-class version, which we hadn't done before simply because we have so few instances of the other fog cases. Now consider these channel wise results. First, look at the 3D output. We see that in this case the important channels are sparse. Since we found this consistently to be the case, we focus the analysis on 2D plots of the top channels ordered by SHAP magnitude. This makes it appear that very few of the channels in FogNet are actually needed for prediction, but we'll return to that issue in the next slide. According to our domain expert from the National Weather Service, Waylon Collins, these top bands are very important for advection fog. Again, less so though for radiation and advection radiation, which echoes the conclusions from the spatial wise plots. But even for advection, where is wind? The model performs well for advection, and we strongly expect it to be influenced by the wind bands in Group 1. Recall the discussion about the various ways to partition elements into features. What if we instead used the entire meteorological groups as features? Now, group 5 is shown to have influence, but so do groups 1, 3, and 4. Well, which explanation, if either, is correct? Can we explain the differences? We believe that the XAI results reflect properties of the channels within the group. Individual channels in group 5 are useful for fog forecasting, but many of the other bands are not. That is, they are part of across-channel patterns that are used for prediction, such as the thermodynamic profile, group 3. So, channel-wise partition shap is unlikely to detect their influence since it is permuting within a single level of that profile. Enough of the gradient is preserved for prediction. However, removing the entire profile evidently changes the prediction enough to assign contribution to features such as wind. This result highlights how the nature of the data and choice of feature grouping influences XAI results. You can trick yourself into preferring the explanation that matches what you thought it should look like. So next we'll focus on quantitative measures to evaluate channel-wise partition shap. 
several sanity checks have been proposed that give numeric measures that at least suggest the quality of explanations. But really we're interested in comparing methods by testing against benchmark models that have known attribution scores. Also in the future we would like to push on how to best select feature groups in large complex rasters. Uh, we would like to use stats in the data itself to partition instead of relying on arbitrary trial and error superpixel sizes. Also, our methods are revealing which features contributed, but not the values of those features. Are these high temperatures or low temperatures that influence an advection fog hit, for example? This is important to get the full picture of how the model works. Thank you very much.